What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. First, I want to say Happy New Year. Hope everybody has a great 2022. I uh, wish you guys all the best. But today we're going to talk about what the heck are these things? I'm sure you've seen them sitting at a, at a rail crossing when the train goes by. Or you've seen them on the back of a train, just, you know, or sitting at a rail yard or on the back of a rail car sitting still, flashing red. What the heck are these things? So these devices are called EOTs or an ETD, at the end of train device. Now this is their replacement for the caboose. Um, these came around uh, in the mid 1980s, um, and they were they were really just to replace the caboose and the, and the people on on the caboose. So there used to be five man crews actually before all this, and when the EOTs came around, it knocked the um, it knocked the crews down to a two-man crew, engineer and conductor. But what does it do, exactly? Um, if you look at this picture here, it actually does several things. The first thing is it gives the engineer the option to actually apply the emergency brakes from the rear and not the head end. Uh, that's the main thing. The other really important thing is also it also gives the engineer um, brake pressure. Um, accurate brake pressure, current brake pressure on the train. So you got to think if you're going down a hill and you want to apply 10 pounds, you know, you apply brakes to, you know, 10 pounds, you can actually watch that EOT as he applies the brakes. You can, you can apply 10 pounds accurately. Um, also, it can tell the engineer when that EOT is moving. Now, how does this help? You think when you're sitting still, and let's say you're sitting, just sitting flat, right, and your train's not stretched out, maybe it's been bunched up from when you stopped before, so the rail car's rolled in. Um, the last thing you want to do as an engineer is, when you, is, is from my understanding, is when you dump the brakes off, and you go to take off and you start moving, you put it in notch one and notch two. The last thing you want to do is jar, you know, stretch that car out really hard. You have the possibility of um, derailing or you can have the possibility of breaking a knuckle. So what, what the EOT does is, when it, you know, whenever an engineer bails his brakes off and he starts to roll, he can put it in notch one or notch two and he starts to roll. And, you know, you can feel the engine kind of, you know, pulling a slack out, pulling a slack out. Well, it'll communicate with the engineer that it's now moving. Whenever you now, it's now moving, he now knows that his train's stretched out. And he can go ahead and start notching up and get to the speed, whatever he needs to be at. Um, that's the main reasoning for this, is for brake test. Uh, you know, the ability to shoot the train in emergency from the rear and, um, and to know when it's moving. But it also does several other things. You know, the engineer has the ability to, uh, you know, he has the ability to test. We can test and dump test these things to make sure it actually works correctly. I'm going to have a video on this in, a, in several days. Um, you have to do this before you leave. It's considered, uh, it is in the class one inspection brake test that you have to dump test your OTs, make sure they work correctly. And, you know, they're, they're ran off, you know, pretty much Bluetooth. Uh, I think they actually call it, uh, what do they call it, an internet of things. It's called an IOTs. So, and, and the EOT is, is charged by the internal battery. Now, as far as the batteries, they're, they're never changed by us. Uh, they actually have an actual internal turbine electric motor that is powered by air, believe it or not. So, you know, when you, when you hook this EOT up, it has a, a brake hose, and you hook it up to the end, and, it, and you'll actually, whenever you cut your angle cock in, you'll actually hear this thing, and it whistles. And if you sit and listen, if you roll down your window at a crossing, whenever the, engine, the train comes by, you'll hear it making a whistling noise. That's the, that's the internal generator charge, keeping that battery charged at all times. But as far as that, that's, that's really it. You know, that, that's what an EOT is. That's what it's there for. Um, some people call it the caboose killer. That's exactly what it was. It was it was designed to replace the caboose. And it, you know, it was more, more viable and, and it saved money. And at the end of the day, we all know what these railroad companies want. They want to save money. So that's what this is. So I'm going to have a video on how to actually dump test this correctly. You actually learn this in school. It's going to be another pretty short video because it's really easy how to dump. It's easy. It's, it's a pain in the butt to mount. It's easy to do it, but they're really heavy. And then dumping the test, learning how to turn in your angle cocks slowly, and cut them off and do all that stuff, communicate with your engineer on how to do a dump test so that way you don't shoot the train. It's a bit of a process, but it's not hard, so don't let it be intimidating. Uh, good luck to everybody going to school. I saw some comments where a lot of guys are getting ready to go in January. Good luck to you guys. I hope y'all you know, y'all do fine. Um, you know, instructors are going to take care of you, and uh, you'll be good to go. Um, if you have any questions, you know where you can find me. And until then, I'll see you guys on the next video. I'll be safe.